Hey y'all, I am Michelle Maisel. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be sharing with you all this video clip. We are going to talk about everything that's going on in this video because this is a conversation that is way, 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 way past due. Now I am going to stop throughout the video and talk and give my insight into what she has to say because she has a lot of things to say in this video that we are going to dive into. So let's get into it. African Americans really do not embrace their culture. And In the last few years, I've noticed such a big wave of African Americans seeking out their African roots to learn where they really come from. And on one hand, it's amazing to see, but on the other hand, I can't help but think that part of it is because people like this shame them into believing they don't have a culture just because they're African American. A lot of Africans have shamelessly berated African Americans for years for not knowing their own culture because they don't know the African culture that they came from. When we're talking about some African Americans, who are trying to connect to the continent of Africa, trying to connect to the African lineage. They are, they have the desire to do that because they don't feel like that their story is complete without knowing the, the African side of things. And so the African Americans who are taking the DNA tests, who are traveling to these countries in Africa, who are researching and, and trying to find out where they came from. They're doing that because they feel like that there is a void. They feel like that there is a hole in their identity. And the only way that that hole and the void is going to be filled is if the story can be completed. And it's not completed to just know that they're able to trace their ancestry back to a slave. They want to know where that slave came from. Now, for me, on my mother's side of the family, I am able to trace the generations back to uh, a slave, an enslaved woman. And in my mind, to just know that that's where it started because there were no written records to, to know where that enslaved woman came from, what country she came from, what tribe did she come from, what language did she speak, where's the rest of her family. I mean, those are the questions that constantly go through my, my mind as to what was her story before she was captured and before she was brought, forcefully brought to the United States of America. What was going on before that? And that's why I and the, you know, one of the African Americans who want to know more, what is beyond the United States of America going into the continent of Africa. So it has nothing to do with them being shamed. A lot of times when, when we're, if, if we're talking about shame, if any shaming is going on, it's a lot of times between the African Americans because there are some African Americans who do not want to acknowledge that they have a lineage, the African continent. They want to deny that side of them. And there are some of them who have even gone as so far as to say that they are Native Americans. They are Native Indians. It's almost like they want to erase the, the Native Indians as we know them, as you know, as we were taught, and they want to replace them, and they definitely they want to erase. The continent of Africa from their story, from their lineage, from their history, from their family altogether. And when you have those types of African Americans, then you do have the African Americans who want to have that connection to the African continent looking at them saying, hey, you know what? Enough is enough. You need to stop the foolery. You need to stop trying to deny that you have any African lineage in you and you need to you need to cut it out. That's where the shaming might, might be coming from between the African Americans. Not do we hear a lot of it coming from the continent of Africa as far as the people on the, the African continent, because if you have the desire to connect, you have the desire. If you don't, you do not. And it also causes them to put an asterisk on black people's Americanness. Both of these ideas are rooted in white supremacy, that black people can't have their own culture and they can never truly be American. A lot of Africans' refusal to recognize blackness as a culture is rooted in their refusal to recognize blackness as its own identity. Because Africans don't identify as black, we identify through our nationalities and ethnicities, which makes sense because we have a connection to where we come from. But for black people that don't have that connection, the only identifier they can really use is black. 
And ironically, Africans recognize that black people don't have that connection because they were stolen from their home cultures, but they will still hold that against them. And Being an American should be an identifier for black people. As a black person in the United States, we should not have to seek a different identification. If you are from Ghana, it doesn't matter what part of Ghana that you're from, it doesn't matter what clan you're from, it doesn't matter what language or dialect that you're speaking, you're from Ghana. It doesn't matter if you live in North Ghana, it doesn't matter if you are living in the Volta region, it doesn't matter if you're living in these other types of regions, you are still Ghanaian. However, when we're talking about black people in the United States, there's never been a time, and it's still not in 2024, that we were seen as Americans. There's always been that identifier, an identifier that we should not have to have. We are American. We were born and raised in America. There should not be a distinction between an American and being black. However, since that is the identity that has always been placed in our faces as being black in the United States, then that is what black people identify with first. They identify the blackness first, that is true. But you rarely hear black people say that they are American first. They're gonna be black first and then they're going to be American. When we're talking about the shirts that we wear, or anything that's talking about the confidence of being a black person in the United States. The shirts are saying things such as black power, black girl magic, black and proud. A lot of times you don't see American attached to that because America has pretty much separated black people from the American, uh, you know, the American identity. And that's the reason why black people have pretty much created their own identity but that's not the way it should be that's not the way it should be it should be that we are american but because and black people know this you have those conversations we know that america has not fully embraced us as an Ameri americans because of the story of the of how black people got to the united states to begin with and because that's not a a part of history that america has dealt with that america has pretty much looked in the face and and acknowledged that these things have happened because that hasn't taken place, that's the reason why there's still this type of separation between black people in the United States and an American. And it's only when you're talking about black immigrants or having those conversations, do black people then want to say, oh, they black American now. But any other time you're in a conversation with black people, rarely do we talk about you know being a black American. We know that, but we're black first. That is first and foremost. That is the identifier, what we identify as, but that is not how it should be. And I think that's what she needs to realize. That is not how it should be. If you're from Nigeria, you're from Nigeria. If you're from Ghana, you're from Ghana. I should be able to say as a black person in the United States that I am an American and that should be enough. But for black people, it's not enough because America has made it not enough for us to say that because they have not given the space for us to be included into these different types of opportunities and the different types of rights that's going on. It just has not really been a place that we could say, yes, this is what we can identify as. And that's the reason why you really have these different identifiers, black being the main one. Use that as an excuse to shame them into looking for their African roots. But even this idea that a, an African-American has to find their roots to legitimize their identity is hypocritical. Because if you're an African-American whose family has been in the U.S. for generations, what does it mean to you to be Yoruba or Amhara? Those identities just feel arbitrary to you. You have no direct connection to them. They haven't shaped you, your ideas, your perspectives, yet for some reason you're expected to find them to legitimize yourself. But what really gets me is I don't understand how Africans respond to this with shame instead of admiration. Like really think about- Finding the roots is not to legitim legitimize who I am as a black person. Finding my roots is 
is fulfilling my story. That's what it is. It is fulfilling my story. It's not going to change the fact that I was born and raised in the United States of America. It's not going to change the fact that I'm an American. It's not going to change the fact that I'm a black person in the United States. What it's going to do, it is going to fulfill a story that I feel like that all black people should know. All black people should know their story. And 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 we don't. And that is because of the history behind it. That is that is the reason why we don't know our story. And I think people need to remember that it's not just black people in the United States that doesn't know their whole story. We're the only ones that really concentrate on it or what people like to always emphasize because of the struggles that has come with the, the enslaved Africans being forcefully brought to the United States. That's the reason why is black people in the United States. That's the ones that's always trying to find that connection to the African continent because we are the minority in the United States of America. When you're talking about all these other types of countries who again have come from enslaved Africans, people tend to forget when we're talking about, you know, Haiti, we're talking about Jamaica, we're talking about the Caribbeans, you know, we're talking about other areas around the world where uh, enslaved Africans, uh, you know, were forcibly, you know, uh, taken to. It's not just the United States of America. There are other cultures, there are other countries who also want to have that story fulfilled as far as what happened before their ancestors were enslaved. They want to have these stories. And the reason why is the African Americans that you hear so much about is because of where we are. We're in the United States of America and we're the minority. And because of so much uh, troubles, so much tor turmoil, uh, so much, uh, you know, atrocities, so much, of, of, you know, of all these bad things that have happened to black people since the enslaved Africans were forcefully brought in their feet set soil in Virginia. Since all that happened, that's the reason why the African Americans are the ones that you hear so much of as far as trying to find that connection because they are the minority in the United States of America. It would be different if they were the majority. If you do speak to some people in the Caribbean, and I've seen different stories on YouTube where where people are saying in, in, in the Caribbeans and other parts of the world as well, where you have African diasporans, where they say, you know, they can't forget, you, you should not forget your African lineage. And a lot of them still practice a lot of the cultural things that they brought when they, you know, when they were brought from these different African empires. So when you go to these these other countries where 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 there are black people or African people within the African descent, we're talking about black people in these other areas of the world of African descent. They are still practicing a lot of the cultural things that would have originated from these African empires and from these enslaved Africans. So it's not just African Americans that's trying to find their story. It's not just African Americans that's trying to find their identity. They're just the ones that are in the forefront a lot of times because of where we are. We are in the United States. And so that makes the experiences a little different than people that are living in countries where they are the majority. The journey of African Americans for a second. Millions of people from thousands of tribes, hundreds of ethnicities were enslaved from all up and down the West Coast of Africa, isolated and brought to a foreign land under the universal race of black. Though they didn't speak the same languages, come from the same places, have the same cultures, in a relatively short amount of time, we're able to band together to create one community. A community that birthed a culture, a language, customs, everything that you would find in an African culture. And even then, y'all will fail to recognize black people as Americans. In that video, he talks about how- And I think that the importance that she needs to know, they weren't African Americans then. And, I, and that that's important that she has to understand. They weren't African Americans when they were brought over forcefully brought over from these African empires. They were from African empires. They were Africans. So don't, don't get that confused. They were not Americans just yet. Because let's not forget that these enslaved Africans weren't just coming to the United States of America. Some of them were going to other places around the world. It is not just the United States of America that these enslaved Africans were going to. And they were not Africans then. They were not African Americans then. They were enslaved Africans is what they were. 
African American is uh, is a word that was not even brought into fruition or was not even created into the 1980s. So that that's a word that you know we we can't even attach to that story of enslaved Africans coming over to United States of America. You can't attach it to that story because they weren't African Americans then. They weren't African Americans until much later. The name changed as the time went on. There are some people that don't, don't even want to consider themselves to be African Americans. So that's not just the African American story that you're speaking of as far as enslaved Africans being brought over with different languages and different different cultures and uh, uh, different clans uh, and different. That's not just the African American story. That is a story that can be told through all different parts of the world when you're talking about African diasporans. So, you know, people have to, to have to remember that it's not just the black people in the United States. That's not just our story. There's other black people around the world. That's their story as well. And we cannot discount the people on the African continent who are still there. That's also their story as well. Because people tend to forget it was their families that was taken that was enslaved, that was sold. It was their family. So it is their story as well. And when you go to some of these countries in Africa, you will see that there are still commemorations of that particular time in history. So it's not just an African-American story. It's not just black people in the US. It's not just our story. It is the story for, for, any, for anybody with the African lineage, for African diasporans. And it's also the story from the people on the African continent. We can't forget that. And I think that's what people on the African continent, a lot of times, they have to want to remind you, it's their story too. You, we can't just own the story of slavery. We can own it as far as how it relates to the United States of America, yes. African Americans can own the slave story as it pertains to the United States, but they can't own the story when it comes to other parts of the world that they can't own. So, you know, that that's what the conversations need to be had on that. Confusing it is when he asks an African American where they're from and they say a U.S. state. But I guarantee if a white American had responded that way, you wouldn't even think twice. Even if that white person, their parents, or even their grandparents immigrated from a European country, their Americanness is automatically validated because they're white. But an African American? What other choice do the enslaved Africans have at that point but to band together to create a culture? They didn't have any other choice. They didn't have any other choice. But when you're talking to some black people who want to forget that story, who want to forget that they were enslaved Africans first before they came to the United States of America, they were not given the American title. People tend to forget that they were still enslaved Africans. That's what they identified them as. And then they started giving them whole totally different names. Americans were never attached to those slaves. They were never attached to that. They had no choice but to start creating something because it wasn't given to them. They were basically a, a totally different entity. They weren't even considered humans, whole full humans. So what other what 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 else could could be could be done of that but to come together and start to create cultures and stories and, and experiences and things like that. That yes, you can say that you can look at those enslaved Africans in the United States of America who had no choice but to come together to create what they whatever they had to create and they were able to create that and they were able to create a culture that we know today as far as the black culture uh and i think the conversation needs to be had now is what is the what is that culture um a lot a lot of people don't want to have that conversation within the black community because the culture is changing as the generations are going so is the culture and in order for us to have a tangible, uh, real life culture, then 
it has to be universal with, within the black people and but black people in the black community and and you know we have to be able to gatekeep that we got to be able to make sure that no one is just being able to infiltrate that space in order for that culture to be preserved and i think that the enslaved africans when they came to the united states of america and they started to create these things they they really wanted to try to preserve as much of that african culture as they could which is a reason why some of the foods that we eat are definitely similar to uh some west african dishes such as greens west africa there's a couple of countries that do have a dish that is similar to that using using a different type of vegetable but it's very similar in way in the way it's made in the way it's taste it's is different as far as what it's eaten with because of course that all depends on uh where you're from but you know when we're talking about uh, you know, we call them candied yams. It's the yams that they eat in Ghana is different, but it's definitely similar. There's a lot of similarities when we look at it between these two cultures. And so I, it is very, very unfathom, unfathomable to me why there are some African-Americans who claim that there's no connection to the African continent. Who's a descendant of enslaved people whose family has been in the U.S. for five, six, seven plus generations is not an American, especially considering America was literally built on the backs of enslaved black people. No one has earned their Americanness more than black Americans. But instead of acknowledging and admiring what they've built, Africans are too busy shaming black people onto Ancestry.com to find the African roots that they're not even- And it is not the people on the African continent that has validated the people that don't look like us. They validated it themselves. They don't have to say that they're anything about American. They've always been American. There's never been a question of, of, of their Americanness. They've always been American. So that's the reason why there's no question then, because they've made it known. They are American. They are, they don't have, <laughs> you know, they don't have to have any type of identifier. We had to have an identifier. We still have to have an identifier. And they are the ones that put that in place. The people that don't look like me, they are the ones that put that in place to have that different identity for black people in the United States. So yes, you might have somebody ask, well, where else are you from? Because the people that are asking that question know that there's something else more. And what they're saying to these black people in the United States is that you should be wanting to know what else is out there. And if the people that don't look like me, if they want to know what else is out there other than them being American, they have every right to do that. No one's saying that they can't. And I don't think that African-Americans need to feel some sort of way because they are trying to find out their story. There are other people that don't look like us who are trying to find their stories as well. But that's just not what people are talking about. So it's not just African-Americans that's trying to connect to what was outside other people are doing the same thing but nobody has a problem with those people trying to connect to their european side if that's what they want to connect to that people that they think that's great oh that's wonderful you're trying to get in contact with your irish you know your french you know your german or whatever and then when you talk to black you know black people in the united states you talk to african americans we should not be questioned because we want to connect to our african roots and and, and know what what countries we could come from what countries could i come from you know that 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 should that should not be something that people are are saying oh well you know you should make a connection because if the people that don't look like us were doing it nobody would be having that conversation the, this is the country that we were born and raised in where we're still trying to fight for things that we should not have to fight for so you know it's important that you that you know these things before you start accusing people on the African continent of these things, when it sounds like to me, she doesn't know the whole story. She's hearing stuff from social media. She hasn't talked to an African-American to know, to know the story fully, or the African-Americans that she's talking to are the African-Americans who want to blame the people on the African continent for everything that has ever gone on in our lives. And that is just absolutely false. The people that we should be blaming is the people that we don't want to talk about. All right, that is all I have to say on that subject. I am Michelle Mazel. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.